So, Winnie, tell me about your first memory in wine. Ooh. <laughs> Dare I say I was five years old? <laughs> <laughs> My parents always used to drink wine at, at lunch on a, on uh, uh, well, almost every day, and on a Sunday, we were allowed to have a tiny little glass of Muscadel, which is very sweet in South Africa, obviously. So that was my first wine memory, and that's been with me forever. I could never <laughs> lose my love for Muscadel because of that. Oh, nice! And tell me about your kind of day-to-day -day living here in the Cape. As oh a my word! Well, first of all, there's no better place to live. <laughs> Um, it is beautiful. There are so many different places to visit. Every farm is unique. Every farm offers something else. But my day-to-day -day starts with taking my child to school, then start writing, tasting. I judge and taste probably about 5,000 wines a year, which is quite a lot. <laughs> uh, but thank God it's spread over, over all the 365 days. So judging and then, of course, attending numerous media functions. I get time for holidays and overseas judging, so that I enjoy very much. <laughs> and what is it? Tell me a bit about being a Cape Master and what that means to you. Well, the only um, s still alive 98 Cape Wine Masters, but 100 have actually qualified. And it's quite a tough course because they obviously like um, other wine qualifications, quite a few qualifications before that. But we write exams in four different subjects, viticulture, viniculture, general knowledge and spirits and then we do tastings in spirits, still wines, sparkling wines and fortified wines, dissertation and uh, wine presentation to your peers which is actually in the end the most scary thing of the whole lot. Um, but it's quite a lot of hard work and it's very very rewarding because you learn so much about different subjects, geography, things that you never really knew about before and I just absolutely loved it mm. and still today use it every day. <laughs> and can you give us an idea of how you've seen the South African wine scene change in the last 10 years, in the last decade? Well it has changed quite a lot, first of all with, with, with more foreign markets open to us, also more foreign consumers wanting to try South African wines and then of course the success of South African wines in international competitions and and those are not just uh, potluck um, awards there's some wines that have won the same prize in the same competition three four years in a row so there's very much improvement in consistency improvement in quality also nowadays people don't just plant varieties wherever they feel like it they they do a lot of soil analysis, a lot of um, research before they decide what to plant. And of course, with global warming has, has put a whole new ball on the playing field with people looking for more drought resistant um, varieties. And of course, that has opened up a whole new world for South Africa because we now do so many of those um, Rhone style varieties, which is again given the consumer much much more to to taste and enjoy and of course we've got so many international commentators coming to South Africa and commentating on our wine so I think we're actually in the global Premier League <laughs> great and uh, what can you give us a tip off that circle members might not know about South African wine something that they should be trying to discover right now well, I think discovering smaller um, producers that, that make limited quantities of wine, um, uh, like m fewer, fewer cases, and uh, finding pockets of wines, if I may mention some names, such as uh, Lucas van Lockerenberg is a, is a young winemaker who, who buys in and actually works in the vineyards of the wines that he wants to make. And he is, he's just stormed onto the scene um, uh, then there's Ren and Bot Bowman who makes these absolutely wonderful wines from areas that you wouldn't think of making wines. And of course then there's the old wine project where people are making wines from very, very old vineyards which have also taken the fancy of, 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 of uh, wine commentators. But the best part is to come and visit actually. <laughs> yeah, of course, especially when it looks like yeah. this. <laughs> um, and then your keen spirits judge as well. Yeah. Um, what do you think will be the next big spirits trend? Well, I'm hoping that it will be brandy. Um, South African brandy wins all the international uh, brandy prizes consistently. I mean, with, for example, the Van Rijn 12-year-old brandy's won the IWSC 
wine brandy of the year for world brandy of the year for about eight times and kwv 15 year old is an old perennial at the at the um, iasc so i hope that brandy is a new thing because we spend um a lot of time increasing the improving the quality of our brandies and it shows mm. and i'm judging them today <laughs> and then my last question when you're not drinking wine what are you drinking i only drink wine and brandy that's <laughs> all i drink <laughs> and a, a touch of whiskey <laughs> thank you very much <laughs>